All right, so something really strange is starting to happen. France is a monarchy, but I figured this day would come. So these two ideologies were by far the most suggested from the last video. I do have a feeling though, this world's gonna play out a little bit stranger. Because here's the thing that I noticed from the previous ideological versus video, uh, fascism wasn't really working together. The communist nations were much quicker to defend each other, so we need to watch for that today. Which belief will have an easier time unifying and fighting the other? Because obviously, they'll have a little bit more of an advantage. Monarchies mostly dominate Western Europe, so they'll get a lot of power out of this region. But the Islamists are fully in control of Eastern Asia. I mean, just India and China alone is gonna give them a lot of strength. Also, there are only two big monarchies in the New World. Every other nation is Muslim. And even though they're not gonna do anything, here's the Australian Free Kingdom and the Kingdom of New Zealand. But the Unibrows are back in Belgium though, so uh, that'll be a nice fashion craze. And look at that, we even have a Lord of the Rings cameo in Palestine. Fucking Saruman is here, guys getting ready to kick Gandalf's ass. Now, I think it's fair to say the queen is obviously gonna have to carry the monarchists here, unless, of course, she falls and doesn't have life alert. And I just learned, which I probably should have known already, this guy from Japan is Hirohito's son. I mean, it's just kind of hard to tell because he doesn't have all his chins. And there's our first war between Kenya and Somalia. Oh, and also Austria is trying to take back Hungary. So I feel kind of dumb for not already anticipating this, but I guess we're gonna see a lot of family members in this episode. This is the grandson of uh, the Ethiopian dude. Oh, and I probably should have mentioned this. It is the 2000 start date, so America's gonna go after the Middle East and spread some freedom. And by freedom, I just mean fuck it up. The Bulgarian Sultanate is about to take out Macedonia. We'll have to see how Michael I responds in Romania. R.I.P. sweet prince. So that's pretty early between you two. The Russian Empire versus the Ukrainian Sultanate. You're not gonna wait another, like, 12 years, Putin? Just wanna... Take him out now, I guess. Oh shit, I forgot. Yeah, no, Putin is not leading Russia in this game. This man clearly has a different plan then. Yep, and they're already gone. That was super fast. Oh my God, speaking of things that don't happen in every single video, let's see what happens here. Okay, so I think Sweden is just declaring war on all the Baltic nations. Yep, that's right. Um, he's also promoting pro- Okay, what the fuck? Uh, Maybe now we'll finally get Vicky 3. You know, this probably shouldn't be surprising, but I have noticed a lot of kingdoms attacking each other. And okay, so I think this might be a little bit more of a common thing for the 2000 start date. Communist China, once again, started a civil war, this time to break away from Islam. The first faction is formed under the Northern Alliance, but uh, nobody else has joined. And at this point, I'm starting to notice the monarchists have a lot more power. I think they might just win this pretty early, but this next election is coming soon for the US. And there's a chance the ruling party may just change. Yeah, I think we all could have guessed this. The Baltics are now going to form the European Union of Allah. Now, I'm not sure, but I don't think these two factions are really going to grow that much. I mean, I see Austria and Hungary have decided to join, but I feel like it might not get much bigger than that. I guess it just depends on the conflicts. South Korea has won, and they made North Korea Islamist as well, while the new Ottoman state declares war on Iran. Both happen to be monarchies, so again, this is not really something you want to see if you're rooting for this ideology. But then again, I think Islam needs all the help they can get, because they're about to lose China. NATO was just formed by Canada, which introduces a third faction to this world, which means I think it's unlikely we see one huge faction versus the other. And personally, I like it that way, I don't want this game to go super slow. And there's the confirmation. Communist China has in fact won. I really don't know what they're gonna do in a world like this, but you're probably gonna wanna just lay low for a while. I don't know if the other ideologies are gonna like you very much. There goes Iraq versus Syria, just after Syria took out Jordan. Oh, and I just noticed the Germans have now turned back into a social democracy. And there isn't much popularity for the kingdom anymore. We also, as always, have a lot going on in Indochina, Thailand versus Vietnam, and Bangladesh has been kicking Burma's ass. This is starting to get really interesting because a lot of monarchies are starting to fall in terms of popularity. Germany might have just been the tip of the iceberg. I've also noticed there are definitely not as many wars going on compared to the previous video. I mean, there's obviously a few here, but at this point in 2003, there was already a world war. Allah's Colombia has declared war on Ecuador. Well, here's our first war in South America. Oh yeah, and of course, Mexico is attacking Central America. The Egyptian monarchy is now attacking Islamic Libya. And this man seems pretty nice. The same kind of nice my uncle was before he touched me. India at this point is by far, I think the strongest Islamic nation, obviously with the fall of China, they're really the only superpower this ideology has left. Oh, but this should help a little bit. I guess there was a second Korean War, and this time South Korea just completely annexed the North. Swiggity Swooty, Germany is coming for 
Djibouti. So I don't really know what the Germans are thinking. There is no other person in that faction. I guess this is just the only name they could come up with. The South African Sultanate just grabbed some land and a new puppet, and I think they'll definitely continue to help their ideology quite a bit. And there goes the Nigerian Union, because Nigeria is now conservative. So clearly, I think this world really doesn't like these two ideologies. Uh, so Germany declared war on Belgium, and they released Luxembourg, and got themselves a nice little naval port. Oh my god, Poland, what did you do to the Czech's kingdom? Oh man, that's just an embarrassing defeat. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but the European Union of Allah is beginning to grow slowly around the world. Oh, Argentina has got themselves in a really messy situation. A war with both Uruguay and Paraguay. It's given them a lot of trouble. Plus, Allah's Colombia isn't done. They took out Ecuador and they want a little bit more. Oh, there's a pretty massive peace deal. Hungary, Romania, Italy are just a few that took some stuff. Even Germany with four states? What the hell happened? Oh, it's the end of that Baltic war that Sweden started, I think. Damn. And if you look at that faction map mode, the Islamists lost a lot, while this random booty union continues to grow for Germany's team. All right, so something really strange is starting to happen. France is a monarchy, but I figured this day would come. Okay, wait a second, I forgot my mental disability. France has gone socialist, as well as the European Avala is still around. They just changed their color to a very similar blue that matches the Northern Alliance. Okay, this is gonna suck. Now, we still do have an example of a monarchy joining the Islamic faction. I guess Finland really needed the help, even though I think they're still gonna lose. Okay, that's something I definitely thought I'd never see. Vatican City joins the Union of Allah. Oh, nice, and now Italy is being nuked. Uh, I'm assuming by France. Uh, yeah, did they? Yeah, they probably did that. So basically what we're seeing here is kind of a continental war. It's only in Europe, and I don't think it's gonna last that long, but obviously the nukes are still flying. Oh, also, Argentina just went through a devastating peace deal. They're now called the traditional Republic of Argentina, all while Brazil is just chilling. Um, they're not even doing anything about Allah's Colombia. The American Duchies just formed the Monroe Alliance, which confirms they won't be helping the old world. Oh, okay, yeah, that that's, that's why. And it looks like he's also about to do 9-11. Here's a fan favorite. Poland is about to take out the Belarusian kingdom, while Germany, I guess, doesn't like the booty anymore. They're, they're now called the Berlin Alliance. Oh man, now things are just getting really weird. Afghanistan joined NATO. We got the new Ottoman state joining the North American Federation and all is Colombia doing this. It's been about five years and there is clearly not going to be a World War III. At least not of the same size we saw in the previous video. Oh, that kind of came out of nowhere. The US declared war on Canada and I guess Allah really didn't give a shit about Colombia. There's another big peace deal. Israel just took four states and puppeted everyone else. Which, by the way, I haven't mentioned yet, uh, this is the Israeli Caliphate. Who would have guessed this is all they had to do to become super powerful? And now, the US, Brazil, and Bolivia are just taking over all of the New World. And alright, Bush, what, what are you doing? I've never seen them take just one side of Canada like this. Communist China has been at war with Pakistan for quite some time, but um, obviously the front hasn't really moved much. They haven't joined a team or anything either, so they really have been laying low. But neither has Russia, and I think that's the biggest reason why we didn't end up seeing a World War III. There's another example of monarchies attacking each other, Portugal versus Spain this time, and I think this is a perfect example why, even though the monarchists had a huge advantage, they just didn't really end up working together. Most of the conflicts, though, were completely restricted to just Europe only, so I obviously missed out on these Bolivian borders. I think I can honestly say this is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in this continent. Okay, there goes Russia. It's about time. It's been nearly six years. They're also at war with India. I have no idea why, because India still has no faction, so that's kind of odd. I don't think Socialist France has much of a chance here. I think ultimately there's just too much power on the enemy side. Unless, of course, Germany does something, which uh, I am just starting to notice they, they certainly have a lot of communist support in their nation. And even though Ireland is at war with the British Empire, they've managed to unify somehow. Oh, perfect. We get to see a nice peace treaty just before the end of the video. Norway, Italy, Yugoslavia are just some of the big winners. I think there's like 10 different countries that ended up taking states though, which is something I've never seen before. Obviously, France didn't have a good time because uh, Brittany was just puppeted. Okay, that's much more of a defining victory. The monarchists have a clear hold over Europe now. I mean, they obviously won in the New Worlds and everyone else is at war with India. 
So I think we can say they just barely avoided a pretty embarrassing loss. For a second there, I thought all the kingdoms were just gonna fall apart due to falling popularity. Anyways guys, this was a super unique game. I really liked it. Completely different from the previous match, as well as uh, don't forget to subscribe for 200k. I'll be doing paintbrush D-Day, I'll be cutting my hair, and I'll probably look like a neo-Nazi. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. And of course, big thanks to Neo Wyone, Destiny Fucker 9000, Jacob W, Random Guy, Elfie Stormblade, Ethan J, Kirby Humor Demon, Namir Stefan M, and Furry Cruz for being my crack daddies. If you want to support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below. Thank you so much for helping, crack boy.